Southwest students, Pastor Natalie here with you. I'm so excited to be here with you on week one of this new series. One of the things I wanna to talk to you today about is the fact that um, how we see power and authority probably needs to look a little bit different when we look at it through the scriptures. When you hear the word power and authority, what do you think? What comes to mind? What stories can you think of? For me, I remember being a high school student. My senior year of high school, one of my best friend's parents asked if I could house sit for them and babysit one of their daughters who was in middle school. I was so excited because I was going to totally be in charge. I was going to be the person who picked her up from school, who took her to school, and then I would go to school, and then I would pick her back up, and I'd make her meals, and I would do all the things, and it was going to be amazing. We're one day into this and I get a phone call from the school that she had gotten suspended from school and all of the sudden, all of the authority and all of the power that had been given to me as a 17 year old student shifted. I had no idea what to do. I didn't know how to pick her up from school. I was in school. My mom had to call and get me out of school. It was a mess. From that moment on, I remember thinking, man, it's not as fun as it looks, man. All that power and all that authority definitely wasn't as fun anymore, but we made it through the week. Needless to say, I did not volunteer to babysit or house sit again for a long time. I was a little bit traumatized. How about you? Is there a time in your life where you've been given authority or you've been given power and it was too much for you? I want to talk to you a little bit about the fact that if we're honest with ourselves, we'd all like to feel powerful, right? Because it puts us in control, especially above other people. I think we've all had that time in our life where we think, man, all I wanna do is be powerful. But have you ever been in a place of power and you know it doesn't always go the way you imagine? Just like my story, I was excited, but it didn't go the way I imagined. We can end up with some pretty complicated feelings about power and about people who have it. In other words, Competing for and then gaining power, super complicated, even in today's world. You may be looking at me thinking, man, Natalie, you are super old. You have no idea what you're talking about. But let me tell you, we've all been in those situations before where we've been given power and then it wasn't as fun. Power and authority have been around from the very beginning. And it wasn't designed to be as complicated as it sometimes feel. The opening part of the Bible the very first book is called Genesis or origin. It's all about the creation of all things, including human beings. And it says something important when it comes to our idea of authority or power. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Genesis 1:26. In the very beginning, God gives us what it's supposed to look like to be in authority over all the things that are on the ground, correct? So according to the writers, Humans were literally put on this planet and given power or, and authority over all of the rest of creation. It's pretty intimidating if you ask me. I mean, how many of you have pets? Do you feed your pets? Do you take care of them every day? That's authority, that's power. It's hard to do, right, on a consistent basis. I always tell my kids they can get a pet if they take care of them. I wanna let you know we have two dogs. My husband and I are the ones who feed the dogs. My husband and I are the ones who clean up after the dogs. How many of you have pets out there where you promised your parents that you're gonna pick up for them? Such a perfect example of having some power and some authority and it being a lot of work once we get it. You know, God's created us and we are to demonstrate and practice authority here on earth. But even though power was part of the deal at the beginning of creation, human, humans haven't always used it right and haven't always used it well. Just because God created us to be an authority it doesn't mean that we use that authority in the right way. But that wasn't the case with Jesus. Jesus turned the idea of power upside down. Jesus actually made it clear what kind of power he had when he said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. That is good news because it means that he is the perfect example of what being powerful looks like. And do you know what Jesus did when he came here? He served. He didn't hold that power and authority over people. He created an upside down kingdom where the power was used in the way that God had always planned on it being used. So Jesus being that example of what power is supposed to look like should make a difference in your life, right? 
No matter what your experience has been with people and authority, whatever you have seen with people in power, whatever you have done with some power that's been given to you, do you know that Jesus's power shows us that it's supposed to be how it's supposed to be used and what it's supposed to be used for? So today, I want you to rethink the way that you think about power and authority. Chances are we have seen or used power in a way that doesn't reflect the image of God in our own personal life and doesn't reflect how God intended for it to be used. Once we start to rethink what power and authority looked like and what Jesus' example is, then we can re-shift our thinking, re-shift how we do things, and we can start to use that power and authority that God has given us to serve those around us. So as you're looking at this new approach of power and authority, I want you to think about it a little bit different. I want you to think about Jesus. I want you to rethink how you use the power that you have. And I want you to rethink about the authority figures you have in your life. How do they show you more and more of Jesus? How are you showing people more and more of Jesus? This doesn't mean that you should ignore the reality of harmful authority or the harmful ways that people use their power. It just means that maybe you can live out an example of what Jesus's authority looks like. What would this valley look like if we turned the idea of authority and power upside down and we just served this community? We served those people that were around. If you serve in ASB or if you volunteer at any club at school, or if you're on a sports team, or if you are on art club or in the band or whatever it is that you do right now as a student and you're in a position where you can love other people well, let's show them what Jesus does that looks different than the world, friends. It can look so different. I want you to rethink each and every day this week those different points that I've talked to you about. And when you do, I want you to see perspectives on people like our parents, our guardians, our bosses and teach it, teachers and coaches. And I want you to start thinking how all the decisions that they have to make on a daily basis and how well they make those decisions. Those people around you hopefully know and love Jesus. And if not, you get to be the example today in their life. Let's serve them well. Let's turn this valley upside down. And remember, Jesus turned the idea of power upside down, and so can you today. Friends, we love you. We are excited to see how God works in your life through this series. Make sure you're inviting your friends. Make sure you're living out these principles. And remember, power and authority are not all they're cracked up to, out to be, right? But if you look at it through the lens of Jesus, this valley can radically change. Let's serve this valley in a new and different way today. We love you.